and uh, already racing 360 sprint cars, midgets, as well as junior late models. This is a young man who is going to go very far in the sport, and we're uh, excited to talk about Jesse and with Jesse here this evening. We kick things off with, I'm going to do a quick roundtable question before we go to break here. Okay, we're headed into Watkins Glen. All we've heard about for weeks and been talking about are the big three. (laughs) Martin Truex, Kevin Harvick, and Kyle Busch in the Cup Series. Here's the question. In about 20 seconds each, Hunter, you could start at the end of Sunday's Cup race. Are we still going to be talking about one of the big three? Yeah, absolutely. Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Busch have a great history of road course racing, so I definitely think so. Cisco. Martin Truex has one of the best average finishes on road courses as of lately. It's hard to bet against him. Murdoch. Kyle Busch is one of the best at Watkins Glen, so I definitely see he being a threat this weekend. See, none of you mentioned Kevin Harvick, and I think if anybody's going to be a threat, I'm saying it's Kevin Harvick, although I do agree that both Truex and Bush should also be in the hunt. But there are going to be some other guys that uh, we need to talk about as well, and we'll start that process when we come back around the turn here. You are listening to Motorsports Madness live on Spreaker and the Performance Motorsports Network. We will be right back. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Green light. Hey, girl. School zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! (gasps) It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text. Stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. Hi, this is Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. Automotive technicians and auto service trainees, how would you like to work at the beach and perform for one of the best car care centers in the nation? Lewis Meineke is now looking for skilled automotive technicians to join their award-winning team. If you're a gearhead that knows his or her stuff or a young up-and-comer that has the motivation and drive to succeed, then you need to make this call today, 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center, located in beautiful Lewis, Delaware, offers a highly competitive compensation plan, great benefits, a flexible schedule, and did we mention that you're going to be working at the beach? Plus, there's a signing bonus for the right candidates. Technicians must be ASE certified and have a minimum of six years' experience. Beginners advance at your own pace in one of several entry-level positions. But whatever you do, don't wait. These jobs will go fast. Call Tim at 302-827-2054. That's 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center. Rev up your career. I'm Kaz Grawl, and you're listening to Race Talk on the Performance Motorsports Network. Welcome back to Motorsports Madness. We broadcast live each Thursday on the Performance Motorsports Network and Spreaker. And, of course, we are also on demand all around the world uh, in uh, a very a variety of different forms, including now for the first time with this show, 
the American Forces Radio Network, and we are so excited uh, that Sports Byline USA has chosen our program to uh, syndicate to American Forces Radio and certainly humbled and thankful for that opportunity. Also, a variety of different uh, AM, FM stations across the country. So uh, very, very uh, grateful to be expanding our audience here. My name is Tom Baker. Hunter Smith is next to me along with Cisco Scaramuza and Chris Murdoch. We have uh, behind the glass Randy Miller as our producer this evening. Jacob Seelman, the normal host of this particular program, is out of town, shall we road. say, on the road, <laughs> uh, getting ready to Somewhere. announce a must-see racing sprint car series race on Saturday. We are talking NASCAR in this segment. I wanted uh, to run down the penalties. We had a couple from a couple. Pocono, and it's kind of important to talk about this because one of them was, again, the Stuart Haas Racing number 4 of Kevin Harvick, and here's what happened. Um, Kevin Harvick and Casey Kane's teams were each assessed 10 driver points and 10 owner points um, post-qualifying inspection failures for both of them. They both failed post-race three times, uh, which resulted in the points penalty. They will start in the rear of the field at Watkins Glen. Um and uh, or or they actually started the rear last weekend. They saw the respective car chiefs ejected for race day, and now basically Harvick's um, points season is kind of in jeopardy. Though it really doesn't matter a whole lot. Kyle Busch had a 48 point lead with five races to go, but it's now 58 because of the penalty. Um, and of course, the key to this though is. The reason it's important is the regular season champion still gets 15 extra yeah. playoff points mm -hmm. to carry th with him through the postseason. So Cisco, although this, because of the number of wins Harvick has, you say, well, he's going to be in the playoffs anyway. Yeah. When it gets to the playoffs, that extra 15 points is pretty big. And Harvick just lost 10. Yeah, so that's basically for him, it's going to make it a little bit harder for him to be in that guaranteed position of being able to make it through the rounds and, you yeah. know, not even have to worry because that's kind of what we're looking at. There was an interesting – someone brought up an interesting point yesterday on Sirius XM to where they were talking about whether or not one of these drivers was going to be able to clinch his spot in the Final Four before we even got there mm -hmm. and how quick would it – how long would it take them to do so? Well, I'll tell you what, Kyle Busch is definitely – down that road yeah. a ways, uh, as is Harvick at this point. Uh, Martin Truex Jr., another driver who's certainly helping himself in the playoffs as we go and could again this weekend. We'll talk about the playoff bubble here in a little bit, but looking ahead now uh, to the Glen, we mentioned the big three in our opening segment, but there are several other drivers worthy of some discussion here when you go to a road course. The, the one thing that's interesting is that, you know, I'm obviously much older than you guys are, and I remember the days when the road course ringers first started um, to come into play. And, you know, because a lot of the NASCAR guys had never driven a road course before, yeah. and, you know, they run a few a year, and, you know, not all were fantastic at it. Now these guys, a lot of the younger drivers especially, They've run road courses in K&N. They've mm -hmm. run them in ARCA. They've run them in the trucks. Yep. You know, whatever. And so you don't see many ringers anymore, but we've got a couple in the series, like A.J. Allmendinger, for example, yeah. whose background is road courses. Um, A.J. already has a win at the Glen mm -hmm. in his career. Do we look at A.J. as a guy that comes up and challenges the big three for the win on Sunday, Hunter? My first thought is to say yes, just because he is a previous winner at Watkins Glen in the Cup Series. But I'm looking at JTG Doherty Racing and how they've been this year and how they've performed, and it's just kind of been exactly, yeah. Cisco, it's just kind of been eh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, so I don't know if the performance is there for the car. I, I definitely think AJ could be a player for a top 10, maybe a top 5 finish, but I still think that your big three are going to go out there and be the talk. Well, and, and we think about back to Sonoma when A.J. Allmendinger, for the first time in 10 years, I think he said, missed a shift. And yeah. Yeah. 
So you got to think about where his mind is at after being so crushed after that race, going to another road course race, having to perform where shifting is a priority. And then another driver I kind of want to bring up into this conversation is a guy who has been dominating, or I wouldn't say dominating, but really showing himself uh, as a contender for wins uh, on the oval side and one of the uh, Joe Gibbs cars that are performing other than Kyle Busch this year who comes from a road course background, Daniel Suarez. Yeah. He's been constantly getting top tens, top fives, and he's able to put himself in those positions. He's almost come away with a win uh, a few times, but pit stop strategy or, or yellow flags is, ha, have taken him out of that. But you come to Watkins Glen, you have to talk about Daniel. Right. Yeah. He's, mm-hmm. on, he's, on a, he's on a good run. He's not winning yet, but... He won a stage at Watkins Glen last year. He's, yes, he's he definitely did. performing. Yep, sure did. He's definitely performing. Yeah, no question. I think AJ can legitimately win this race. I, I think, you know, that this is a situation where maybe he doesn't have the raw speed that the, the big three would have. Mm-hmm. But on a road course, I do think it matters somewhat at Watkins Glen because it's, it's a much bigger, faster road course in Sonoma. But at the same time, a lot of this is strategy, and you can do a lot more with strategy on a road course because yeah, you basically you're, you're working backwards from the end. And I think that team knows how to run this course and knows how mm-hmm. to do it the right way. I think A.J. Allmendinger legitimately has a shot to win this race. And, you know, I think you, you look at some of the guys like Brad Kozlowski, for example, is another driver I think you have to take into consideration Yep. Um, when you go to a road course. And I honestly think that the Hendrick camp, if they can show some speed, I think there are a couple of guys in the Hendrick camp that could be fun to watch. Chase Elliott being one. Chase won on a road course in a truck at one point. Um, I there think was, was, there was some Canada. contact involved. Well, yeah. But again, <laughs> that's part of it. But I, so I think Chase, but I'll tell you another driver is Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch and Clint Boyer both, for that matter, because both of yeah. those drivers, Boyer's record at Watkins Glen is deceptively good. And I think this is the best equipment he's had since Michael Waltrip going into the Glen. Clint Boyer is a guy that could very easily surprise and run yeah. for the win, I think. I think another driver we're overlooking is Jamie McMurray. Jamie McMurray has, had, has yeah. had a lot of success on yep. road courses, more so Sonoma than Watkins Glen, but in a road course background in general, Jamie McMurray has really shown a lot of speed and a lot of light in the past couple uh, yeah. instances that we've been on road courses as well. Oh, yeah. And Kyle Larson as mm-hmm. well. His Larson's teammate. another one that uh, that I think is going to be interesting to watch. Yep. This, this is a race where, you know, you get a driver, even if the equipment on a straightaway is not as fast. It's all about technique. And so a guy like Jamie McMurray or Kyle Larson, you know, maybe they don't have the fastest car, but they could certainly be fast enough over the distance of the race to make yes, up for what for they sure. have, you know, in one lap speed. Yeah. And that's where I want to kind of bring up my, my next point and kind of pose a question because we had talked about this this driver back uh, in Sonoma when we were, we were talking about drivers who are good on road courses but not, might – not have the, the raw speed on the straightaways, and that's Michael McDowell. Yeah, Michael yeah. McDowell is is really really good at road course racing, and he's good at that strategy play. Now they're in the same boat as JTG, where they might not have the good straightaway speed, but I feel like if they play their strategy right, Michael can get that car around that course well enough to get a good finish. Well, I think a good finish yeah. definitely. I'm not sure that I look at Michael as having a good shot to win the event. But I certainly think a top five, top ten is very realistic for uh, for Michael. And and Michael is definitely a driver. I mean, again, if they can give him a car that can run <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well enough, yep. he'll put it there. He's he's a good road course racer. Um, and I think Watkins Glen suits his go out and get it driving yes, style it mm-hmm. perfectly. But I just don't uh, I don't see it happening for him to win with. The equipment he's got, I think, more realistically, he could pull a top five to ten out of this uh, on the right day with the right strategy. And I think about Eric Almarola is one more driver we ought to be throwing in there. He's a good road course I like racer. His paint yeah, for this I think too. you <laughs> like what his paint scheme. For yeah, this yeah, at, the, bowl, the go bowling car. Yes, <laughs> yeah, those they, are always they, cool. They made it a, a bowling lane. Yep, so. it was it was a strike for you on that yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he throws a strike and not a gutter ball. Yeah. at Watkins Glen on Sunday. We'll be back. 
with more of Motorsports Madness right after this. Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels new to intermediate to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety. HMS serves the majority of Monster Energy NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, Camping World Truck, IndyCar, and IMSA WeatherTech teams, as well as countless SCCA and club level racers and driving enthusiasts throughout North America. Featuring world-renowned brands like Schubert Helmets, Schroep Belts, Adidas Suits and Shoes, Lifeline Fire Systems, and even Racecom Radio Kits, HMS has the right product for your type of racing and your budget. Their representatives are experts on only one thing, making your track driving as safe as possible. With locations in Mooresville, North Carolina and Danvers, Massachusetts, the HMS staff is always ready to take the time to help you find the right product for your safety needs. Don't settle for second when it comes to motorsport safety. Stop in to HMS Motorsport. Visit them on their website at hmsmotorsport.com or send them a message on Facebook and tell them the folks from PMN Radio sent you. What an awesome game. What's up with your car? I don't know. It won't start. How are we getting home? Chill. My parents signed me up for the roadside assistance from Lewis Meineke. It was free with my oil change. They'd come and get the car started or get us home and tow the car to the shop. Good to know. With my driving, my parents never know what to expect. When you join the Meineke Car Care Club with a $35 preferred service, you get four free months of roadside assistance, including tire change, battery jump, lockout service, towing, and more. Contact Lewis Meineke, located on Route 1, or call 827-2054. When do you think of a plumber? Like most people, even if it's an emergency, you can be confident about who will arrive to help you. For quality and reliability, count on someone you can trust. Call on the plumbing services of Hague Quality Water of Maryland. Plumbing doesn't have to be an emergency. We handle all kinds of preventative maintenance, too. Hague Quality Water of Maryland is family-owned here in Annapolis since 1993. For a refreshing choice, call us at 888-84-WATER or visit us online. COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, is a lung disease that robs people of their ability to breathe. As many as 24 million Americans suffer from COPD, also known as chronic bronchitis or emphysema, and half of them don't know they have the disease. If you or someone you love is over 35 and has smoked more than 100 cigarettes in their lifetime, visit driveforcopd.org and take the screener, then take that to your doctor. I'm Jeff Stoltz, and I drive for COPD. Hi, I'm Chase Cabry, and you're listening to Race Talk on the Performance Motorsports Network. Now, back to the show. Welcome back to Motorsports Madness, broadcast live on Spreaker and the Performance Motorsports Network and syndicated worldwide. And we are excited to be talking racing again this evening, still talking about NASCAR and specifically about Watkins Glen, uh, you know, it's it, sometimes NASCAR makes a change and yeah. people just kind of, all right, yeah, whatever. And sometimes NASCAR makes a change and social media just goes off the chain. <laughs> and that's basically what happened when NASCAR decided that they were going to change the tech time to just prior to the race. This is... Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. It's different. It's interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll turn to you, Cisco. What's your take on that? Well, what it is essentially is that they're going to be moving tech to after qualifying. Yeah. So you're going to have qualifying, you know, on NBCSN. All the drivers will take their times. 
But those results are going to be unofficial until tomorrow morning because what they're going to do is impound the cars after qualifying and then go in and tech the cars afterwards. So all of a sudden now we have a situation where the qualifying order may not even matter. That could be a completely different qualifying order tomorrow morning or, or Sunday morning in that case. So it's going to be weird. I'm curious to see if anybody's really going to take note of it right away. I'm wondering if this is going to be a case where the teams aren't going to put much into this and then suddenly we have 20 guys starting in the back again. Well, Chris, I know what NASCAR is trying to do with this, but I wonder, does this, especially being a road course, does does this hit the mark or miss the mark? Because I'm not really too sure what to think about this, to be honest. Well, I think we can all agree that there's an issue here with qualifying and tech and tech inspection and, it, and it's been a an issue f- since the start of the season uh now what the fix to that issue is who knows i'm happy yeah. once again that nascar is trying something a- and trying to see if they could can, can take the tech and take their time with tech and make sure everybody's hitting their mark i think at Watkins Glen, i uh, people aren't going to try and play the game too much. You would think, and maybe this a, is why a, NASCAR picked this race course, to do it. And I think it's a good race to implement it in, just so they can try it, work out the bugs, and then release the qualifying order Sunday morning. And I, I don't think it changes too much, really. It's just a, the extra step to try to deter people away from messing with their cars. Yeah. yeah. You may or may not see teams try to manipulate stuff for qualifying here. This is a very speed-dependent road course. There's three, almost four really long straightaways at this track, so you may see a lot of guys play with arrow a little bit or try and get that extra in qualifying. It's a very speed-dependent track, and it's a very track position-dependent racetrack when it comes to starting and whatnot. It's hard to go from the back to the front in the quick 90 laps that you have at Watkins Glen. You also got to think with this new change, they're impounding the cars. Yeah. So if somebody wants to use qualifying is a practice thing and make adjustments you can't yeah they're impounded you're yep. you're stuck with what you got that's a good point yep. happy so hour isn't a thing anymore happy yeah hour isn't a thing. You've, you're you're stuck with what you got as soon as qualifying's over so that could definitely play a big factor in like what you said with the road course it could amplify things a lot more because what if somebody's way too tight in practice uh and they are w- way too tight in qualifying and they want to loosen it up they can't. They gotta wait for their first stop under, under the race conditions because they're impounded until the race starts. Yeah, I I don't know. I I I think I like it just because it seems to me that it's simpler this way. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I don't like to see is we've had a few races this year where there've been ten or twelve or thirteen cars that haven't been able to qualify. Yeah. Yep. And I think the fans want to see everybody qualify. I don't think. I don't think it makes qualifying nearly as exciting or even genuine when you've got, you know, a third of your field that doesn't make it out of tech in time. So yeah. maybe this way, everybody goes through the motions and qualifies. And then if we got to reset things because, you know, the teams couldn't behave, then that's, I guess, just what it is. But right. it certainly seems to me that we're at least putting it in a situation where you're either going to pass or you're not, yeah. but at least we're now talking about race rather than having mm-hmm. to go out mm-hmm. to qualify. So mm-hmm. kind of an interesting scenario there, and we'll see how it um, works out. Now, I want to turn to Xfinity because there's sort of a weird game of musical chairs going on, and it surrounds GMS racing. Yep. The number 23 Xfinity car for GMS racing is going to be driven this weekend, and this, to me, gets the sneakiest, most brilliant driver's move <laughs> of the year award, is going to be driven by A.J. Allmendinger. Yeah. I mean, who else would you want in that car on the road course at Watkins Glen other than A.J. Allmendinger? It's like I keep saying, it's not a bad car. It's not bad equipment. You put the right driver in there at the right track, you go out there and win a race with yeah. that car. Oh, I that agree. car could easily win a race. And with AJ at Watkins Glen, that he could take that <laughs> win very yeah. realistically. I absolutely believe that. I don't want to overshadow the other guy with GMS. Well, I, yeah, I, I'm going to get to that. So 
So they put Almendinger in the 23, and you're going, well, but what about Spencer Gallagher? Hang on, we'll get to him in a minute. <laughs> GMS brought two cars. It was bringing two cars. They've entered two cars for the Xfinity Series. In the 24 car 25. for GMS Racing is Justin Haley. The 24. Uh, yeah, 24. <laughs> two foe. Two foe. In the two foe. Justin <laughs> Haley driving the two foe for GMS Racing. Now you're still going where Spencer Gallagher. I promise we're going to get to that in a minute. But again, another sneaky move by GMS Racing because yes. Justin Haley, a veteran of the Trans Am series and a very, very good road course racer. Yeah. This is another. He is over them. I've been paying attention to him on social media. He cannot wait to get out. There oh, he's track. fired up. He is ready. He's fired up. And, and, and for those of you who don't know Justin, we've had Justin on the show a lot of times. And, and I'm sure we'll get him back soon again. But Justin is one of these drivers that. You know, when, when you're talking to him, you, you get Justin. It's authentic Justin. Mm -hmm. And he is legit fired up for this because he believes he can go out and win. And remember, he almost stole Daytona in the Xfinity uh, series. So he wants an Xfinity Just don't win. remind him. It's his, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, his, it's his last shot that he knows about, at least for now, this year in the Xfinity car. So now you're saying, well, where is Spencer Gallagher? Here's where Spencer Gallagher is. You have to go back to the Cup Series roster. Spencer Gallagher is making his Cup Series debut at Watkins Glen this weekend, driving the number 23. Is it a GMS car? Nope. It's the BK Racing car number 23. But here's what's interesting about this. For those of you who don't know, uh, Mike Beam, who is the general manager at GMS Racing, has put down a bid to buy the assets of BK Racing. And remember, BK is currently in basically bank trust at yeah. this point. Uh, the auction date, I think, is the 20th of this month, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I think it was about a million eight that might be mm -hmm. put down as a starter bid uh, to buy the assets of BK Racing. So what you got the uh, what number? Twenty three. Yeah. Didn't even have hmm. to change the number. Yeah. Hmm. So <laughs> I, been I, a rumor change for a while that that was going to happen, uh, and that Beam was going to put in a bid for that. And I think putting Spencer in that car after everything that has happened to that kid over the past few months is a good choice. Give him a fresh start. Well, so. it's interesting because when you look at it. You look at, okay, again, I, I try to explain to people that more than anything else, this is a business, and you got to think of it, these owners and these crew chiefs and whatever, these drivers are like just, it's it's like a draft board. So you got these drivers and who's going to start here and do what and run where. Okay, so we wanted to win the Xfinity race. We don't know if Spencer's got the road course skill set to do it. Let's drop A.J. Allmendinger in the yeah. car. Okay, <laughs> and then we've got Justin Haley, another road course ace. Let's bring a second car for him, and we'll put Spencer in the cup car. You know, not necessarily is he going to go out and challenge, but we just want to give him some seat time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a way to get him on the track without having to – uh, decrease our chances at victory in the main series that we yep. compete in. Yep. So really, this was a brilliant move as far as I'm concerned. B BK Racing and GMS Racing getting together for this. Um, really, really good move. And I just thought it was funny that they didn't have to change and, the number. And you got to think uh, other things that are rumored. If he, if he buys that cup team, if he buys the access to BK Racing, transforms that into GMS, what – what team would that ultimately align them with in that Cup Series? Well, I mean, it could be anybody. We don't know exactly. Probably Hendrick, but we don't know. It's it's a it, the the way that I've heard. And again, we we stress rumor. Yeah. The way that I that we hear the rumor is that uh, this would be a satellite team for GMS. It wouldn't be directly GMS owned. It would be a satellite team um, for GMS. But logically, that now sets up a truck to Xfinity to Cup situation for anyone who comes into gms and they do actually have i think a late model team somewhere that yep. uh, s some folks so are running too. to see things adding up sort of like what toyota is doing uh like you can draw your own conclusions <laughs> and while chris is drawing his own conclusions we're gonna step aside and let him think about it for a little while we'll be back with more of motorsports madness right around the turn Okay, so, Sarah, I'm dropping you off at Emily's? Yep. And Josh, you're going to... Soccer, Dad. 
Soccer practice. Right. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my short shorts. What? No! Yep, and my dorky dad hat, and I'm going to do my dad dance for all your friends. They'll love it! Seriously? Why? Because I like my short shorts. Of course, I could be talked out of it if you guys would just buckle up your seatbelts without giving me a hard time. It's important to get your kids to buckle up for safety, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, all it takes is your parental powers of persuasion. Okay, okay, we're buckling up. See, all buckled. Good choice. I'll just have to do my dad dance at dinner time. What, what? No! Do what you have to to make sure your kids are wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves, and off-road recovery techniques. This is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach so call bsr today 304-725-8444 give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway that's 304-725-8444 this is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children name one of the leading killers of u.s children age 1 to 13 what's the best way to protect children in a car crash at what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Noah Gregson, and you're listening to Motorsports Madness on PMN, the Performance Motorsports Network. Welcome back to Motorsports Madness. We are live on Spreaker and the Performance Motorsports Network, the show also available on demand and through syndication across the country and around the world now through the American Forces Radio Network, and we are very thankful for that. Tom Baker, joined by Hunter Smith, Cisco Scaramuza, Chris Murdoch, and behind the glass... We have Randy Miller punching all the right buttons as our producer. We're talking Xfinity. We got just a couple minutes in this segment. And we talked about the moves GMS made to set themselves up to take a shot to win this. We talked about Spencer Gallagher going to the Cup Series. But, of course, Xfinity has its own uh, playoff. And, you know, this. Th- there's, there's one driver that I think everybody's focused on right now. And... I'm going to let us sort of start this discussion and then we're going to table it until a little bit later on in our second hour here. But uh, Chris Bell made an interesting statement this week about the fact that he doesn't know if he wanted to waste another year of his prime (laughs) um, running again in the Xfinity series. So the question then becomes, obviously, he wants to go to the Cup Series. Um, Going to talk about whether or not you think he deserves or is ready for a shot at the Cup Series. Then, of course, we'll talk about what, um, whether or not we, where he might go. So I'll start with you, Hunter. Do you think Chris Bell is ready? Does he deserve a shot at the Cup Series in 2019? See, I'm old school. I don't think anybody after one year of Xfinity is ready for full-time Cup right after that. Um, has not e- – good shot, but has not won the championship yet. Good shot at the championship this year, but has not won. So I, my personal opinion is, albeit a lot of talent in him, he's a great driver, should not be in a Cup car next year. 
They said full the time. same about full Logano. Time. Remember Logano? They said he went up way too quick, and he had well, a ton of talent. Yeah, yeah, but now I will just toss into that debate since you made that comparison. Joey Logano went from running Hooters Pro Cup, uh, KNN, and what was then I think Bush or maybe it was yeah. Nationwide, whatever, um, all in the same kind of car, and then went to Cup in the new. Gen 6. That's fair. Which was completely different. Or COT yeah. at that driven, point. He was COT, COT sorry. Yeah. yeah. COT. Yeah. What he, what, completely different than what he had driven for the last number of years quite successfully, I might add. Um, not quite the same for Chris Bell. However, um, you do make a point in the fact that I believe Joey Logano wasn't ready from a mental standpoint. Not that he wasn't smart enough. But it, he was still young, and mm-hmm. it was a bit overwhelming, I think, for him to go as quickly as he did. Um, to Hunter's point, I think, you know, he's kind of, you're kind of looking at it, thinking maybe the same thing with Chris Bell to a degree. Another year in Xfinity Series would make a difference. What say you? Uh, I want to take another driver into this mix and say William Byron. He went out and won the championship and then moved up to the 24. Well, and I think that's an interesting comparison. I think the jury's still out on how much progress William Byron has actually made from the driving standpoint because we know that he's he's been a down year for Hendrick. He's running on par with the other drivers. Mm -hmm. He's getting just outside the top ten while Alex and Chase are running in and then Jimmy Johnson's way out in the Bahamas. Yeah, that's what's interesting is, Um, yeah, he's actually beaten Jimmy. Yeah, and... So that's the point I make. Will is Chris Bell ready? Where is he going to go? <laughs> <laughs> well, so again, is he ready? I, yes I or no? Say, I say yes. Says go. If there was an easy car for him to get in, yes. But the fact that there isn't a car ready for him tells me, at that point, just. Just take the extra time in Xfinity. The, the reason I say yes is because, yes, this is his first time season in Xfinity. He did run part-time, though, the, the previous that's, year. Yeah, that's And true. won his first Xfinity Series start. Yeah, with, with that interesting slide job <laughs> yeah. that, uh, <laughs> that de- derailed Eric Jones on his way to a win. I'm I'm going to throw an example out in Chase Elliott. So Chase Elliott's first year in Xfinity goes out, dominates, wins a championship. Second year... Where was he? He. That's fair. And okay, yeah, he's run second in a lot in exactly eight cup races. He's run second. But this is his what third year? Third now year in, in cup. cup. Yeah, and see, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to. I, I get tired of all, all of this. Chase isn't Chase. Whatever. Look, Chase Elliott. It, I believe if he if he had been able to somehow be in position to come up four years earlier, Chase Elliott would probably have a championship by now. I, he came up to a Hendrick Motorsports team that was on its way down yeah. as an organization. And Chase has done everything but win mm-hmm. cup races for the last two or three years. And somebody will say, well, yeah, but he hasn't won. Well, okay, but it's not exactly easy to win these no, things. No, it's he's not. Getting, I mean, he's finally getting stage wins, which yes. is the well, first Well, yeah. yeah. See, I, I think Chase has proven with the fact that the entire organization has struggled this year. I think when you look at how Chase is running compared to how jimmy johnson is running who's a seven-time champion yeah um, says a lot it's not even close folks yeah. i mean chase, chase Elliott is, is the top performing he, car at his yes yeah. absolutely and so I judging by the points jimmy's the second yeah yeah well Which technically it's well <laughs> william william struggled out of the gate for yeah. the first handful of races which you expect and alex almost. alex had some issues that that didn't help him um you know and now it's like you look at it, and they're they're all running better, yep. or at least starting to. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see how they do in the road course. But um, look, I I don't for for me, I think Chris Bell could be ready to come up to Cup if they wanted to move him to Cup. Yep. But I think for Chris Bell to say, well, golly gee, I don't know if I want to waste another year of prime. How how many years does he expect to be prime? Yeah. I mean, it, it, does he figure it's four and done or what? I mean, what is – I don't understand. I, I, I To me, as a driver, you look at your boss and say, 
what do you want me to drive next week, boss? Yeah. And the boss says, that car right over there? And you go, no problem. <laughs> and that's what you do. I, I just, I, I don't, this is, you know. The way I see it, there's a lot of talent at TRD as a whole right now. Yeah. Well, Some on the same level as Chris Bell. It, it gets to a point where he says, I don't want to wait, I don't want to wait. And They're TRD, not going to take TRD, long to fill that seat. TRD can make it happen because they did the same thing with Eric Jones. Well, sure. Right. Yeah. If yeah. TRD wants Bell to go to Cub, they'll make the opportunity. Yeah. Right. Now, here, here's what's interesting. You mentioned all the talent. Well, let's, let's look at this. TRD's got a, a pretty big pipeline here. Chris Bell. Yep. Ryan Priest. Noah Gregson. Uh, um, Todd Gilliland. <laughs> Harrison Burton. Chris Janekis. Zane Smith. Sheldon Creed, Chase Purdy, Tyler Ankrum, Tyler Dipple, and our soon-to-be guest on tonight's show, Jesse Love, also part of that, although Jesse's only 13, so he's not ready to really Gracie go too, too far for yet. That um, Gracie Trotter Natalie as Decker. well, and yep. Natalie Decker. I forgot yep. a couple of those. Um, trying to make the list before the show, but, but the point being is awful lot of young talent. No way they're ever going to have enough yeah. space to put them um, as we go through the years. So some of some of these folks are going to wander off into yeah. other camps. Now we come back to Chris Bell and the fundamental question is if we wanted to bring him to cup, where would he go? And we, we all think that the obvious would be for furniture row to once again, expand to a two car team yeah. and, bring back the 77 Mm -hmm. and Chris Bell jumps in the 77 and then, you know, in a year or two when he's ready to, to, to sort of Mm -hmm. come up to the parent club, Joe Gibbs racing, somebody going bye-bye. Now I have two issues with this, Chris. The first one is that when you look at the current driver lineup at Joe Gibbs, Eric Jones just got there Mm -hmm. and he just won a race Um, and he's running much, much better Mm -hmm. right now than he has yet. And he's a TRD guy too. Right. So you you have have Jones who just got there. Daniel Suarez will be in that ride until he either chooses to leave or, you know, the Lord calls him home one or the other because he brings all the sponsorship for that car. Um, so Suarez, and he just got He's there performing. last year. He's performing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Kyle Busch. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> Six wins. Yeah. You don't I, mean, I mean, listen, Matt Kenseth really? went back to Roush. Um, and Tom, Could we see? No. I <laughs> wanted to bring up and say Denny Hamlin. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the it, only one not performing. We're, we, we're yep. left with Denny Hamlin. Now, I think Denny's contract runs through 2020, if I'm not mistaken. And FedEx's does as well. So that would lend itself to saying, let's put Chris somewhere Mm -hmm. and keep him, hold on, keep him till 2020. And at that point, he comes over, then he goes somewhere. And at that point also, you've got Noah Gregson and maybe even Todd Gilliland to find a place for certainly Gregson should be ready for cup by then. Um, So this is really... But but the thing is, it's not going to take much for Denny to start cranking off wins. Mm-mm. If he starts winning a few races, you're not going to be so quick. No. This is going to be an interesting dynamic to see. And here's who gets lost in all of this. Ryan Priest, who's older and deserves a shot. Yep. Well, you think you were talking about contract runs through 2020. We know as well as anybody, especially with Joe Gibbs, TRD wants something. The contract is <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, and but they just buy yeah. But but again, I mean, I, I, certainly I don't see Chris Bell yeah. going straight to Gibbs. I mean, he's not. It's not like okay, we want Chris to come to the eleven. We didn't so think bye bye Denny. Would go straight you know, to the nineteen. Well, little different but, situation yeah, there. That's, um, that how much of that Toyota, was Carl? That was a sponsor, um, yeah. mm. and that was a driver who was thirty-seven years old and. You know, um, likes farming. He liked farming. <laughs> was just hitting his you know, stride. And, yeah, and he, he yeah, you know, he was, he was on his way to a championship. Yeah, and, uh, yep. and in the bank account was happy, and you know, so <laughs> so out went Carl, and in came Daniel Suarez. Um, I don't see that same situation being created for Chris Bell. I don't think Toyota is going to tell Denny Hamlin to get out. No. Um, but you know. You put, because we are with the 77, we saw it for a year, and then Eric went in. Do you think, and 
we, we go back to the Furniture Row because they're having money talks right now with Martin trying to get him re-signed for the next few years. Yeah. There's a lot like of, that's not going to happen. There's a, <laughs> lot of, there's a lot of situations going into that. Do you want to sign on to put Chris Bell in there for – two years yeah i think you do now now again i'm not i'm not trying to be barney visser here um i'm not assuming what he's going to do but if you're asking me if i'm barney visser yes i would love to have it because toyota would make it worth my while if they they want it so so if you can put that situation together and have chris bell for a couple years yes i think that's exactly what you do um now on the other hand it may not be the 77 car we may see the, the there's a rumor going around, and again, rumor, rumor, uh, <laughs> rumor that maybe there is a one car team out there that may switch from its current manufacturer over to Toyota to accommodate I have Chris heard Bell, said rumor from um, and people. that that car may have a driver in it who is an older driver. And that driver might either get a teammate in Chris Bell or maybe, you know, just you, uh, slide out of the seat. With, with that, that would be a really smart move for that team to make. It could be. They'd if get manufacturer money. Yeah. I mean, and, and, that, and, and you can, you can uh, go through your, your roster and look for a veteran in a one-car team who, There's not a lot of one car teams. Yeah, there. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to think about so it. So you all, all can draw your own conclusions. Ninety-five. Uh, that uh, maybe there there might be, but oh, again, boy. rumor. Um, we'll S- see how send, that works. Send out. your mail to Tom yeah. at Race Chaser. Rumors are going to spread them, right? I mean, you know, it's 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 an interesting uh, atmosphere right now going on with Toyota because certainly what they do with Chris Bell is paramount to what they're going to do with the next two or three drivers below him and boy you got some amazing talent there and you're never going to be able to accommodate it all we need the toyota series at yeah. some point yeah. just to keep all these people <laughs> exactly in place. Yep. right we need to step aside we'll be back with more of motorsports madness right around the turn When do you think of a plumber? Like most people, even if it's an emergency, you can be confident about who will arrive to help you. For quality and reliability, count on someone you can trust. Call on the plumbing services of Hague Quality Water of Maryland. Plumbing doesn't have to be an emergency. We handle all kinds of preventative maintenance, too. Hague Quality Water of Maryland is family-owned here in Annapolis since 1993. For a refreshing choice, call us at 888-84-WATER or visit us online. Here in Lewis Meineke, we're more than just your average car care center. Hey, it's Dave, your neighbor from Lewis Meineke. Whether you need an oil change, brakes, tires, or anything under the hood, we've got you covered. Take advantage of our free check engine light service as well. Yes, free. And don't forget about our free shuttle service. Never stress, we'll take care of the rest. On with life. Give us a call at Lewis Meineke, 302-827-2054. Every 30 minutes, another innocent person is killed due to a drunk driver. My best friend. My brother. My poor grandchild. My sister. My father. My husband. My mom. (laughs) My mommy. Well, I've been afraid of changing, cause I've built my life around you. Stop these tragedies before they happen don't drink and drive. Do you love the sound of high revving motors and the smell of burning rubber? Do you want to get your car sideways right at the ragged edge of control? If you've always wanted to try drifting or learn to improve your drifting skills, Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier motorsports facility, has the expert instructors and the specialized track to teach you how to drift and the skills necessary to drift competitively. From skid pad to open sessions, Summit Point Motorsports Park has the safe and open environment that allows drifters of all skill levels, new to intermediate, to get sideways and smoking. With a focus on safety and the skill set necessary to drift competitively, Summit Point Motorsports Park's Drift Nirvana is just the thing for you. Call for your reservation today, 304-725-8444. Or for more information, go online, summitpoint-raceway.com or you can email them at office at bsrinc.com. Drift Nirvana, getting you sideways the right way. 
If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. Hide the kids. It's time to get dirty with the Race Chaser Online crew. Here's your host, Jacob Seelman, with Turn 5 Live's curator of Casa de Pork Chop, Stephen Evans. Well, not quite. Jacob <laughs> Seelman, Stephen Evans, neither of them are here this evening. Uh, and we're going to, instead of getting dirty, we're going to stay in the realm of NASCAR. Of, <laughs> yeah, of pavement just for a little while here on Motorsports Madness. We, by the way, are broadcasting live as well on Facebook. If you go, <coughs> Pardon me. If you go to the Race Chaser Media Facebook page, Race Chaser Media Facebook page, you will be able to watch the show live, and that will begin to be what we hope will be a fun little habit around here that we, in addition to... Uh, broadcasting the show live on Spreaker and the Performance Motorsports Network for radio, and then having it available on demand. We also are going to be live on Facebook as well. Chris Murdoch. If you are listening to the show on one of the re-air days, you can go to the Race Chaser Media YouTube channel and catch the replay there. That's correct. Or find it somewhere else on Facebook because the replay will be uploaded to Facebook. So again, both (laughs) audio and video on demand. So we are trying our best to uh, (laughs) make it as easy as possible for you all to enjoy it. And we hope that you do feel free to, if you are watching us on Facebook Live, let us know uh, what you think and feel free to comment on the topics that we are discussing here. Just... um, uh, again, a minute or two here. Um, busy weekend at Watkins Glen. k and Pro Series East here uh, at, the Glen or, uh, at the Glen on Friday. And I think a couple storylines here. Tyler Ankrum has been tearing it up lately. Yeah. He's got three in a row and four on the yep. season. But uh, he's pulling double duty. Old Bubba is going to yep. be joining Tyler Ankrum and the crew uh, as Bubba – Drops into the Jefferson Pitts number 27. He and Will Rogers both competing in this. Will has run, won about, uh, what, 828 road races? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. You know? But you also can't leave out Noah Gregson. Well, exactly. Also Gregson, yeah. 18. I mean, there's there's a few, there are a few moonlighters in this that could really make this very, very interesting k and Pro Series East, if you're at the Glen, is Friday afternoon at 445, not on live TV. It will be rebroadcast, I think it's the following Wednesday. It's at about 6 o'clock on NBCSN, so you can catch that race, but it should be a great race. Uh, mm-hmm. Another driver, real quick, to keep your eye on, out of the Rev Racing Stable, Ernie Francis Jr., this young man, has been hot, hot, hot in sports cars and finished third, I think, at New Jersey in his first start in uh, the K&M Pro Series East earlier this year. He also picked up a win somewhere last weekend. I can't remember where it was. Yeah, probably back in the the sports car. No reason why uh, Ernie can't go out and run for the win. Uh, So K&M Pro Series East gets things started if – the weather allows it to mm-hmm. on Friday yeah. afternoon uh, at Watkins Glen. So uh, check that out. And we are once again going to step aside. When we come back, we are going to begin to talk IndyCar. And we're also going to be joined in just a little while by Jesse Love. And we're going to talk to that 13 year old racer who is really making a name for himself very quickly on the West Coast. You are listening to Motorsports Madness. We broadcast live on Spreaker, the Performance Motorsports Network, and Facebook. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety. HMS serves the majority of Monster Energy NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, Camping World Truck, IndyCar, and IMSA WeatherTech teams, as well as countless SCCA and club-level racers and driving enthusiasts throughout North America. Featuring world-renowned brands like Schubert Helmets, Schroep Belts, Adidas Suits and Shoes, Lifeline Fire Systems, and even Racecom Radio Kits, HMS has the right product for your type of racing and your budget. 
Their representatives are experts on only one thing, making your track driving as safe as possible. With locations in Mooresville, North Carolina and Danvers, Massachusetts, the HMS staff is always ready to take the time to help you find the right product for your safety needs. Don't settle for second when it comes to motorsport safety. Stop in to HMS Motorsport. Visit them on their website at hmsmotorsport.com or send them a message on Facebook and tell them the folks from PMN Radio sent you. I'm an HRA Pro Stock Racer, Tanner Gray, and you're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. Welcome back to Motorsports Madness. We are broadcasting live on the Race Chaser Media Facebook page, as well as Spreaker and the Performance Motorsports Network. And IndyCar is where we're going to go next here. We're going to only have just a little short time to tease it, but uh, we, we just came off mid-Ohio, and I think... We were all wondering whether or not Graham Rahal would pull another mid-Ohio surprise. Didn't happen. Uh, but and Dixon didn't win his sixth one there either. Dixon didn't mm. win his sixth, but, boy, Dixon Alex finished. Rossi, just he just knows how to get it yes, done at just the right times, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, not only Alexander Rossi, but Robert Wickens. Again. Second. <laughs> and yeah. Robert Wickens finishing second. That's awesome for him, putting that up there. That's awesome. We're going to talk more IndyCar here as we get into uh, this hour of the program, but we have got uh, Jesse Love coming up just around the corner, and Jesse is going to be a young man you're going to be really interested to hear from, I'm sure, and hear about a cool story for him and just a really mature 13-year-old racer. I think going to really surprise you the way that uh, he communicates. We'll be back with Jesse and much more of Motorsports Madness right after this. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun, go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444, Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Every 30 minutes, another innocent person is killed due to a drunk driver. My best friend. My brother. My poor grandchild. My sister. My father. My husband. My mom. <laughs> my mommy. Well, I've been afraid of changing Cause I've built my life around you Stop these tragedies before they happen. Don't drink and drive. The Performance Motorsports Network is a compilation of shows about motorsports. From technical to controversial to just fun, everything you like about racing and gearhead stuff is right here on one internet channel. The Performance Motorsports Network. Tell your friends about it. Hi, I'm Reed Sorensen. Racing has been a part of me and my family for as long as I can remember. I had to make tough choices early on to get to the top. It took hard work and dedication, but it's those tough choices that helped me prepare for challenges I would face as a cup driver. Make the right choices today and be ready for the challenges tomorrow. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Hi, I'm Matt Tift, and you're listening to Race Talk on the Performance Motorsports Network. Welcome back to Motorsports Madness, and we are getting ready to be joined by our special guest for the evening, Jesse Love, and Jesse going to talk with us from the West Coast, where he is uh, currently, I think, uh, I don't know if he's still at Ventura, but I know he was spending some time out there, and uh, so we'll talk to Jesse here in just a minute, but uh, 
We are talking motorsports here, and we started to talk about IndyCar, and I did want to throw out, as we get out of mid-Ohio here, I think when you kind of look at the, the, the point standings and where we are in the IndyCar season, I'm going to do a quick round the table here, and I'll start okay. with, with uh, Cisco. Who do you think of the top five in points? Is this Scott Dixon's championship to lose, or are we at a point where you still feel like this could be a three or four horse race? Because I really don't think any farther back than fourth place has a shot at this point. I, I'd be hard pressed to think this isn't going to go to Dixie Cup. Like you said, I think it is his championship to lose. But you that do. being said, I think the rest of the guys are still in the hunt. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to take a mistake out of Dixon to make that change. Interesting. Okay. So the other guys have a shot, but only if Dixon screws yes, up. Chris, do basically. you agree or disagree? I, I'll i say it, it, it'll be tight because I feel like there's a lot of people in that top five hunt, Joseph Newgarden being one, that are starting to show some speed and get up there and start contending, and they're going to be able. And I feel like as the season goes on the season wears down, the points are only going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. And Dixon, like Cisco said, is going to have to be flawless to keep this championship. See, I still feel like we've got enough racing left here, Hunter, where I'm not ready to coronate Scott Dixon as the champion. I feel like when you start looking at the fact that we haven't gone to Pocono yet, we haven't gone to Watkins Glen yet, you know, there's two races right there that I think could make a huge difference because both yeah. of those tracks tend to be tracks where we get a lot of action. I mean, there, you know, I think we're still at a point where especially the, 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 the Penske cars, but I don't think you can count. I don't think this is Scott Dixon's championship to lose. Do you agree or disagree? I'm hearing the Jaws theme song right now, <laughs> and it's Alexander, <laughs> it's Alexander Rossi closing <laughs> in. And we're going to tracks Watkins Glen. He won there last year. Pocono, he's good on ovals. And then you have Sonoma to throw in. And, yes. you know, that's double points. That could pretty much change everything. But I think Alexander Rossi is perfectly happy in the spot he's at now, being the chaser and not the chasey. <laughs> Well, that, you know, it makes a lot of sense because yeah. I feel like Rossi's the guy that nobody really wants to talk about in this, but he, he just, it's like, and I don't, I'm not saying this as a disrespectful thing, basically the opposite. He's like a bad penny. He just keeps <laughs> hanging around, right? He just keeps turning up. Yeah. Um, you know, if Rossi can pull off another victory or two quickly here, yeah. I think he plays himself right into this and... You know, Dixon wins these things on consistency. Yes. Right. And I don't see consistency being the only thing it takes with guys like Joseph Newgarden and Rossi who are so aggressive. Dixon, I believe, has to go out and still win another, even a couple more races if he wants to put this out of reach. I don't know if that's going to happen at least right away. Yeah, I agree. You know, this has been a really interesting IndyCar season because of the fact that we've never established a dominant driver. Dixon's been consistent, but Rossi's been fast. Marco Andretti has shown flashes, just hasn't had the results. Joe to, You know, yeah, well, you've got Joseph Newgarden, Will Power, you know, all the usual suspects. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that, you know, this really is going to be a situation where uh, we could see yet a big swing in the IndyCar points. We're going to try and see if we can bring Jesse Love on board with us here. Jesse, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Hey, it's Jesse Love. Welcome to Motorsports Madness. Jesse from California. And Jesse, talk a little bit about, first of all, your give a quick little background on your uh, where did you start and how long have you been racing? All of that kind of uh, information. Yeah, so before I begin, uh, thank you to everybody who's allowing me to be on the show. Uh, means You're welcome. But uh, yeah, so a little <laughs> bit about myself. A um, little bit about myself. I'm uh, 13 years old and I'm a diehard racer. I love every minute of it. I'm kind of one of those guys that would like to get in any car, anytime, anywhere. I started when I was five years old out at my local go-kart track in Baylands, uh, about 30 minutes from where I live. And uh, ever since then, uh, my dad and I, my dad's been training me and 
Uh, I've been getting up the ranks uh, as fast as we can. Uh, we have had a lot of waivers to get in different series, which I'll get into back into a little bit here. But, yeah, I started writing core midgets. After that, I moved into a little bit of outlaw carts. And then uh, yeah, I tested a micro once or twice, and after that I got into a uh, forward focus midget, uh, which is something that I really do to be, um, you know, as I said, have been in the past few years. So we have ran uh, dirt and payment focus midgets for a while. Uh, then after that, I started doing some row core stuff in the winter over here in Las Vegas, which is where I currently am right now. Uh, after that, we uh, did some legend cars and bandos on row cores, which is something, even the bandos, and uh, uh, Tom and I talk a little bit about these cars sometimes, and I'm not sure he likes them as much as I do, uh, but uh, you know, I sure do love um, them. I think they really make you milk every bit of the car you have out of them, so uh, we did some of that for a while. After that, the guy out of Van Dyke in Huntington Beach uh, let me pilot his uh, Van Dyke, which is the night in the payment side. It's the 1998 uh, Jason Leffler car, which is championship. It's first year out, and uh, it's it's an old car, but man, it, you know it's very fast, and we've been very getting a win in that series. We have gotten um, a second, third place, a fourth place, and a fifth place. So, you know that you know, next number is uh, hopefully we'll be here in a few weeks. We'll be the number one. I've also done some uh, dirt midget stuff, which is something uh, a very hard car to drive. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's something that uh, really uh, makes you have your nails and really make you get your feet wet before you get in one of those cars, and something that I really love to drive. I've also been doing some sprint car stuff on the West Coast uh, for Rick Bernal, and uh, that's been something that, the best way I can explain it is, if you say, what do you like more, the dirt midget or the dirt sprint car? And it's a very, very close person, I would say, uh, just on out on your own, the dirt midget will be more fun. However, I think that the sprint car races I've been running lately have been harder to win, but they're not as fun as the midget races. You know, you will have almost up to 30 cars show up at, you know, where I was last time, Placerville. 20 cars will start the race, you know, 10 cars go home. Mm-hmm. And just to make the main there, you know, it's pretty difficult. And it's just cars and uh, you know, one group track to be maybe a two group track. It really makes you milk every bit of the car if you're starting deep in the field. The dirt midget is something that uh, it's kind of just the race, the tracks that I've been at uh, lately have kind of just been elbows up. So it's just kind of, you know, who's going to drive it in yeah. deeper and who's mm-hmm. going to muscle more. And that's kind of, you know, one of those things where, you know, Trace's car, he sets the car up so well that coming off the corner, the hardest part of the race is keeping the front wheels off, uh, keep the front wheels on the ground. So that's uh, that's one of the challenges too. So uh, after the the open wheel stuff, we've also been doing uh, some late model stuff on the West Coast, development and Toyota and Nate Cower, and we've been doing very well in that. Last year we won the championship in five out of the eight races, and uh, this year so far we've kind of. Uh, had some second year bad luck, if you would say. First race out, we uh, I overdid the car in the beginning. I guess I had to remember how to drive a late model again. <laughs> we ended up yeah. finishing third. <laughs> we ended up finishing third. And the next race, we won that one. Uh, the race after that, we got a little uh, boot from behind coming to the green after leading uh, halfway through the race. That's coming to the good. green. From a restart, we got the boot. And uh, got sent in. We actually, I actually saved it somehow. There's a video on uh, Jesse Love Racing, which I all the race fans to go watch. It's pretty cool. I saved it somehow and then um, got ran into again. But uh, <laughs> that's something, another thing that I've had to learn is, you know, don't be a product of your surroundings, but also make sure that uh, you, uh, you know, are aware of, you know, how to deal with situations right. like that. And, you know, a few years ago, 10-year-old Jesse Love would have gotten out of his car and, you know, said some not very nice things and <laughs> thrown a steering wheel across the Oh, my. But Back when you were young. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kids. But, you know, how Jesse, how my dad has taught me and how everybody else uh, I've been so grateful to have has taught me is, you know, it's not handle situations like that. And just, you know, last weekend uh, we were uh, leading the race for battling for the lead. 
after having a very strong car, I had a clutch problem go out. And instead of getting, you know, getting in the car and throwing a single or something like that, we just got out of the car and, you know, accepted it and move on to the next one and not make the same, same mistake again. Uh, the Nate Clower team, they gave me a great car every weekend. Uh, they put 100%, uh, 110% of their effort into it and blood, sweat, and te- tears. So I'm um, just overall very grateful uh, to be doing what I am being able to do. Uh, and I can't thank everybody else for all the support. So, yeah, that's a little bit about Dusty Love. Actually, that was a lot about yeah. Jesse Love. It was about seven or eight minutes yeah. worth about Jesse Love. Uh, I, I told you all that uh, this young man knew how to talk and, uh, you know, very mature for 13 years old and, and really understands uh, how to do the off-the-track stuff as well as the on-the-track stuff. Okay, mm-hmm. so um, we've got just a minute or so before we need to take a break here. So uh, real quickly, Jesse, Talk a little bit, if you could only drive out of all the cars that you just mentioned that you either have driven or currently drive, if you could pick just one that you were going to do a full season in, which one would you pick and why in about 30 seconds? Mm, uh, mm-hmm, mm, mm. Probably a, <laughs> a USAC sprint car, a 410 nice. USAC national sprint car. Okay. Nice. Okay, and why? Well, it's uh, something that, you know, there's not a lot of politics in. Uh, it, it's all about just, you know, being able to drive. And it's, you know, um, to be hard, not 100% politically correct, in my heart it really is, you know, I love open wheel racing so much. And it's always going to have um, a very deep, deep uh, emotional attachment to me. So that's probably just why I just love open wheel racing so much and probably why I'm, you know, 410 National Sprint Car. With that, we're going to step aside more with Jesse Love. Right after this, you're listening to Motorsports Madness on Race Chaser Radio. Parents, your son or daughter has had their license for a while now, but you want to make sure they're prepared for any situation they may face on the road. High school driver's ed doesn't teach them to drive defensively. They need to be prepared for any highway emergency. For less than a month's insurance, and a whole lot less, BSR instructors at Summit Point Motorsports Park in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, will teach your son or daughter how to respond instantly and positively to unexpected situations on the road. BSR's specialized accident avoidance training teaches swerve to avoid maneuvers at highway speed, ocular driving, which focuses driving attention on ways to avoid accidents, vehicle dynamics and feedback, skid control, and skid recovery, threshold braking on straights and progressive braking on curves and off-road recovery techniques this is stuff driver's ed simply doesn't teach so call bsr today 304-725-8444 give your kid the skill set needed to drive safely and responsibly on the highway that's 304-725-8444 you hear that that's the sound of america's only sports car that's right it's a corvette but not just any corvette It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this can be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes. On Route 1 just north of Quantico and Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. HMS Motorsport is the leader in motorsport safety. HMS serves the majority of Monster Energy NASCAR Cup, Xfinity, Camping World Truck, IndyCar, and IMSA WeatherTech teams, as well as countless SCCA and club-level racers and driving enthusiasts throughout North America. Featuring world-renowned brands like Schubert Helmets, Schroep Belts, Adidas Suits and Shoes, Lifeline Fire Systems, and even Racecom Radio Kits, HMS has the right product for your type of racing and your budget. Their representatives are experts on only one thing, making your track driving as safe as possible. With locations in Mooresville, North Carolina and Danvers, Massachusetts, the HMS staff is always ready to take the time to help you find the right product for your safety needs. Don't settle for second when it comes to motorsport safety. Stop in to HMS Motorsport. Visit them on their website at hmsmotorsport.com or send them a message on Facebook and tell them the folks from PMN Radio sent you. Hi, this is John Andrasik of Five for Fighting, here for RAD the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. You know, style is a personal thing, and your lifestyle is your business. But if you take it on the road, it becomes everybody's business. So please, plan ahead, designate before you celebrate. Friends, 
Don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm modified driver Matt Hirschman. You're listening to Motorsports Madness on the Performance Motorsports Network. Welcome back to Motorsports Madness. We are broadcasting live on Spreaker and the Performance Motorsports Network. We're also live on our Race Chaser Media Facebook page if you want to check out the live video stream. And we are talking right now with 13-year-old West Coast racer Jesse Love. Uh, Jesse, I think, headed more on a NASCAR path than the open wheel path but uh enjoys the open wheel cars a lot and uh jesse you were talking about the fact or you alluded to in our last segment that you actually had to have a waiver for a couple of the cars that you've raced talk to us in detail about what that process involved and you know why that came to happen for you yeah it's kind of like uh for lack of a better word, throwing a monkey wrench and everything. It's a lot of uh, different processes that have to go into getting a waiver from, you know, such great series that have, you know, been doing what they're doing for so long, like BCRA. Uh, BCRA was, uh, you know, a very tough waiver that we had. It's a full, full-blown full midget, uh, like you would see on the national tour, just a different series. Um, I was able to waiver to run with them and uh, on, with some of the best drivers that I've ever seen, and uh, very great racing, too. Yeah. Uh, overall, overall, just uh, I've basically had to uh, say my whole resume and uh, meet with them. and uh, Basically, the, for all the race fans out there, that are, uh, the younger race fans that are watching this, it's very important to keep, that, you keep your nose clean and drive smart and drive safe on the track. At first, yeah lose a win here or there but so uh, always take a clean second place over first place it's very important and it came into play as i get my waiver uh with the usac bcra guys my car owner and the midget team trace van dyne always told me uh to keep your nose clean and don't if you if i ever dump somebody there would be a meeting after the pits for me waiting so uh that's always something that i've and I never blew off, and I always paid attention to, and it paid off as I was trying to get the waiver because if I did have the, uh, how would you say, uh, reputation of a dirty driver, BCRA would not allow that um, in their series, and that's why in the BCRA Midget Series you'll start 10 cars or you'll start 20 cars or 15 or whatever they start for the main event, and they'll finish 10, 15, 20 cars. So it's always, and that's because they... All the drivers in that series are very competitive, but they're also very clean. Well, that makes a big difference, and it makes it much easier for you as kind of the new guy coming in. When you're racing with a bunch of drivers who race clean, it makes a big difference for you because then you can learn how to race the car with them and not have to worry about them being rough with you or trying to take you out, right? And... The series I had, you know, I've been running every now and then. Uh, there's, you know, there's some rough drivers in it, and not the line. Uh, and my Rick Burn, uh, and people like Rick Burn all have always told me, don't become a product of your environment in a series that isn't uh, very clean. However, in the BCR Midget series, I've been trying to become a product of a, in my environment, uh, how clean they are. And they'll, they won't give you an inch. You know, they'll give you a few centimeters here and there. <laughs> um, however, how, they're not going to go anymore to, you know, making contact because they're all very clean. Um, some of the guys in that series don't have all the money in the world uh, to be, you know, uh, buying new cars like that. So because of that, they're very clean. They're conscious of their surroundings. And it really makes for a better driver when you know how to – not tear up your equipment or not use up your equipment, but still be aggressive and be clean. Yeah, I agree 100%. Okay, so at 13 years old, you're already racing sprint cars. You're already racing midgets. Uh, I know that, again, by rule, you have to run the junior late model class out there at uh, uh, Madeira, but um, you've got, I think, some opportunities, if not this year, then hopefully next year, 
to perhaps come east and maybe do some racing. And I know you got to be looking forward to that as well. Yeah, that's looking like a very strong opportunity. It's most likely going to play out um, in our hands. And super stoked to do that and race with you know some of the best super late models, open late model drivers in the country. Uh, I can't wait for that. Hopefully uh, it keeps you know, playing out how we want it to. I know that Lauren Rainier uh, is working very hard, and he's doing a great job, and as, uh, as well as race face brain development. And uh, it's just hope we can keep doing what we're doing here and hopefully be back east uh, this year, if not next year. Okay. Uh, who do you look up to in the sport, Jesse? Who are some drivers, you know, a driver or two, that uh, you emulate and kind of look up to as drivers that you're trying to pattern yourself after? Uh, past or present? Uh, <laughs> either one. Oh, probably uh, then uh, hmm, AJ Foy, I would say. Uh, Whoa, probably, there's oh, no, a great because, choice. Because uh, AJ Foy, you know, my dream, like, I can win the 8500 and then the next day retire. Say I've done it all. I <laughs> <laughs> He's winning a lot of Indy fans over. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See, Jesse, yeah, like, you know, like he said, he just wants to race. He doesn't care what it is. Yeah, I'll race anything, anytime, anywhere. I, just, I love racing, and it means everything to me. But, you know, yeah, back to A.J. Foy. I mean, he was, I, in my opinion, probably the best driver. Uh, he, you know, won in stock cars. He won in, you know, Indy cars. You know, pretty much everything. Won USAC, the dirt. Cars, yeah. Champ cars. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that's probably why he is, you know, somebody that I look up to and I want to pave my path under. Hopefully, you know, fall under the, you know, hopefully one day. If I keep, you know, following, you know, AJ Foy and keep my head, you know, humble, and hopefully one day we can be, you know, one of the guys like AJ Foy. Well, also AJ likes to attack uh, bees nests on his property too, so you might not <laughs> quite want to emulate him in that, and maybe not, uh, you know, going over and 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 clocking the winner of the race of Victory Lane. You might not want to emulate that, but AJ certainly, as a driver, uh, you know, one of the best there ever was, and again, an old school yeah. racer who, yeah. you know, came up. He and Mario Andretti were two drivers who came up in an era when you just went from one thing to the other and you did it as naturally as, you know, as you could. Um, you know, if there's a Mount Rushmore for motorsports, I'd have to put them both on it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So good choices there, Jesse. Okay, so um, if you look at the drivers of today at NASCAR, do you have a favorite? Ooh, uh, that's a good one. Uh, Alex Bowen, uh, by far. Alex Bowman, uh, Kyle Busch, especially Kyle Busch on the driving side with how good he is, but also, Alex Bowen, because he's really been an idol to me. Uh, I met Alex Bowen because I, I used to run quarter midgets, and the, there was a class called, uh, I think it was on, yeah, B. There's a class called B. And it's uh, probably the second size of class next to a. Uh, Light A. But, yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> he had a track record there that, geez, it must have been like either late, late 1990s or very, very early 2000s that he set the track record there and B, and it hadn't been broken since. And we went out there, and we broke the track record, and then we flew out to uh, Phoenix, and we met him. And uh, ever since then, I really, like, looked into him, and I saw that he ran, you know, USAC Midgets, yeah. and he uh, focused series as well. So he's also, his father, Sean, is a great guy, and the whole family is just a great, great family, and a kid uh, like Alex Bowman that I really look up to, and I, there's a win coming for him very soon. Okay, real quick, we got about 45 seconds, Jesse. Where can those who are watching or listening to this show, where can they find you and follow you? Give us your website and your, all your social media. Yeah, so race fans, make sure to go check out, uh, you know, jessieloveracing.com on, um, on your browser. And also go check out my uh, new app that Race Face Brand Development just put out called Jesse Love Racing. You can, you know, see where I'm racing. Uh, news about myself, the photo gallery we have there, and it's it's very important you go check it out. It's very cool that uh, you guys see what I'm doing over the weekends, and hopefully we can come out to the track and meet you guys. I love meeting all the fans; it really means a ton. Uh, you can also go check out my Facebook and Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is Jesse Love Junior. My Facebook is Jesse Love Racing, and my Twitter is Jesse Love Junior as well. So, race fans, go check that out. Also, you know, just a quick uh, before we end here, a uh, quick thank you to all my sponsors. The Seal Future Fund, 
5150, Home Smiles, Gunderson Direct, Lease Insurance, k Filters, Farmers Insurance, Toyota Race and Development, all the fans and supporters, and Race Face Brand Development. Way to go, Jesse Love. You knocked that one out of the park. Okay, and that is uh, Jesse Love. Thanks for being on. Good luck the rest of the way. We'll be talking to you more as we get through the season. We are going to step aside more of Motorsports Madness right after this. How to be a great dad in 15 seconds. Bike ride, go fish, walk in the park, phone call, milkshake, play catch, picnic, fly a kite, tell jokes, laugh, talk, read a story, tell a story, bumper car, swing set, bowling, pillow fight, cut loose, stay tight. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Automotive technicians and auto service trainees, how would you like to work at the beach and perform for one of the best car care centers in the nation? Lewis Meineke is now looking for skilled automotive technicians to join their award-winning team. If you're a gearhead that knows his or her stuff or a young up-and-comer that has the motivation and drive to succeed, then you need to make this call today, 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center, located in beautiful Lewis, Delaware, offers a highly competitive compensation plan, great benefits, a flexible schedule, and did we mention that you're going to be working at the beach? Plus, there's a signing bonus for the right candidates. Technicians must be ASE certified and have a minimum of six years' experience. Beginners advance at your own pace in one of several entry-level positions. But whatever you do, don't wait. These jobs will go fast. Call Tim at 302-827-2054. That's 302-827-2054. Lewis Meineke Car Care Center. Rev up your career. You hear that? That's the sound of America's only sports car. That's right. It's a Corvette. But not just any Corvette. It's your Corvette. It's that who cares if there's traffic part of your day. And this can be you when you come to Cooper Corvettes. With 60 years of Corvettes to choose from, there's always a Corvette in your budget. And they'll service any Corvette you bring in. Cooper Corvettes. On Route 1 just north of Quantico and Triangle. Call, click, or visit coopercorvettes.com. How to deal with someone who says that's so gay. Outsmart them. This party is, like, so gay. Totally. Excuse me, but did you ladies know the word gay used to mean happy or excited? Then it became a word used to describe gay people. Then somehow it came to mean dumb or stupid, which is how you just used it, which is not very nice. Ew, that guy is on the football team and super smart, and he totally hates us now. Totally. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Learn more at thinkbeforeyouspeak.com. Hi, I'm Cole Custer, and you're listening to the Performance Motorsports Network, the voice of motorsports. Welcome back to Motorsports Madness. You're on Race Chaser Radio. We are broadcasting live on Spreaker, the Performance Motorsports Network, and our Facebook page. Go to Race Chaser Media. You can catch us. The video will be available on our YouTube page as well, Race Chaser Online YouTube page uh, sometime. Uh, well, we actually broadcast live on Thursday night, so sometime probably on Friday. And then, of course, you can hear the podcast just about anywhere uh, that podcasts happen just by searching Race Chaser Radio. And for the first time tonight, we are actually being syndicated through Sports Byline USA around the world via the American Forces Radio Network. And that is a humbling opportunity for us, and we're very thankful for yep. that and looking real forward to uh, to continuing to be a part of that. So uh, with that, we, uh, of course, just talked to Jesse Love. And uh, during the break, I was... Uh, thinking about the fact that we've spent a part of this show talking about Chris Bell Mm -hmm. and all of the TRD drivers, Jesse, basically the youngest one, probably at the age of 13. And, you know, when when you look at what Jesse's done, I mean, think about this. Hunter, you're a fitness expert. Okay, this kid's 13 years old. He's racing full size sprint cars and midgets around half mile dirt tracks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, I'm not I'm not good at math, but not some your, things don't seem to add up on paper. Yeah. <laughs> not your grandfather's uh, race car. What were you doing you know? when you were 13, Chris? Uh, 
I sit in my room, probably. Doing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eye racing, probably, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was that's what uh, most of you guys do now is is I race. Um, but it, it really is a. Uh, a great opportunity that Jesse's had mm -hmm. to run all of those different yeah. kinds of cars. And, and uh, I think he's going to be uh, a force to be reckoned with as he gets older and gets more experience. Yeah. And I do think that you will probably see him back East uh, in 2019 running over here in the Carolinas, at least on a part-time basis. So awesome. more people going to get to know who Jesse Love is. We continue with our show and we continue to talk about, uh, different types of series, different national series. We, we, we talked IndyCar a little bit earlier, and I did want to throw out that, you know, Jesse mentioned A.J. Foyt, and if you're looking for a situation in IndyCar this year where maybe you say, I don't want to throw a black flag, but maybe I haven't gotten so far what I thought I was expecting. A caution flag. Yeah. Or a blue flag, I guess, yeah. in this case. Yeah, AJ Foyt we'll Racing. Flag. I thought Tony Kanaan would be better than he has. Is I thought that whole team was going to be better, to be honest. Yeah, I, well, yeah. Mateus Laced is new. Um, so I expected him to kind of be the typical rookie and have a learning curve. But, you know, I really thought that Tony Kanaan would be better. And I'm surprised, honestly, that he hasn't. What, Cisco do you think is, I mean, do you see any progress from the beginning of the year to now? Well, yeah, certainly there is going to be progress in f as far as what their engineering team is able to do, what the mechanics are doing when they're at the shop. But, I mean, part of this, it feels almost like, a, like what Hendrick's going through because, remember, this is a new car for them. So I'm wondering mm -hmm. if they maybe lost some of the playbook somewhere and maybe that's where they're struggling, kind of similar to how Hendrick had themselves. Yes, it's not a completely new chassis and entirely new construction, or that's what the Camaros have versus the IndyCar, where that's a brand new car, right. whereas it's not on the platform of the Gen 6. Okay. So they really didn't have a playbook to go off then. I think they're the team that, I, that looking at everything has lost the most ground from where they were. Well, you know, it's interesting to me that Tony, when you, when you talk with Tony about this, his answer is that we're building a winning team. Yeah. And he seems committed to a year, maybe two more years with AJ. He wants to see this team become yeah. a winning team. I thought that they had a chance at the 500. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But... It's been one of those situations where outside of Indy, it's been Man. You know, six <laughs> to ten. Yeah. You know, he's been six to tenth. I mean, I, you know, at best, hasn't spent a lot of time in the top five even. Yep. I just expected that uh, it would be a little better. But I, as you said. Uh, you they're, know, they're not doing nothing over no, there. And no. I, and I, wonder, I wonder if some of this improvement may be coming in places where we're not going to see it. This is something that well, comes into effect with teams. You know, you look at the on-track performance. That's not necessarily everything that the team's doing. There could be stuff behind the scenes, structural changes, something like yeah. that as yeah. well that are in the pipeline that yep. maybe not, we're not seeing. I think that's something to where someone like a Roush Racing, I think, would need a lot more uh, work as of late would be the behind the scenes sort of structure and getting right. everything back on track back yep. there. Yeah, I I definitely see that. And every team, not only just in racing, but every team in sports period goes through yep. periods of we need to rebuild and yep. restructure a little yeah. bit, whether it's behind the scenes or the athletes on the field or the track. Yep. And I think the one thing that AJ Foyt Racing has going for them is that they have a Tony Kanaan. Yes. yes. They have a Tony Kanaan it's, there. It's like and Matt Kenseth. In yeah, a way. exactly. Yep. And, and Roush Fenway right now, the best thing they could have done is is bring Matt back and, yes. and run the few races that he the few races that he's running. And Mateus Least, he he's shown Oh, light. I think he's yes. going he's to be He's shown yes. light. He's, he's going to be great. So, like I said, just having Tony Kanaan at AJ Foy is the best thing they can do right now is lock him down, use him to help build. Laced, I think, for me, out of the recent group, so the Pietro Fittipaldis himself, maybe I'd throw Zach Veach into that as well. Mm -hmm. Laced shows me a lot more almost enthusiasm than I saw from some of the other drivers. Veach has been great, especially oh, see, in the I, last yeah, couple of weeks. Take Zach Veach yeah, out of okay. because But, but as with some of the drivers that we've seen you know making that transition indy car now some of the indy lights guys as well 
certainly, I think um, my, his name escapes me, who's driving for Junkos right now in Indy Lights. Kaiser. Um, Kaiser, yes. Yeah, Kyle Kaiser. Um, he's going to be someone else I think we're going to have to watch. But out of the current rookie crop, I think laced and, you know, throwing Jones in there as well and, you know, some of the See, other recent rookies. I Gosh, I don't know. I think, I think you got – I think Pietro getting hurt. Yes. Him. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. But on the other hand, I think Zach Clayman DeMello, who I was a little bullish on in the beginning of the year, the the first few races, I think Zach mm-hmm. Clayman DeMello has really shown me that he's worthy of that big stage. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I think, again, we, if you just want to talk about rookies, we got this guy named Wickens. Well, yeah. Wickens. He's, he's kind of like an outside. He's, yeah. not, he's a rookie who's not a rookie, the, basically. Right. This is why yeah. I don't want to say rookie. I want to say the younger drivers. Yeah. He, um, he, he won a championship in softball and is now playing baseball as a rookie. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's what we're dealing with. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's the other way around. I got like Brett Favre playing high school ball. Yeah. yeah. I think, or arena football. Yeah. yeah. I think when you look at the young guys and one person that I don't want to say they've I don't want to use the word disappointed because I'm not disappointed in his performance. But struggled is Spencer Piggott. Yes. Spencer Piggott won at every level coming up that ladder. And he's not with a bad team. ECR is a stout (laughs) organization. But he lately has started to run up front more. Right. Yes. I think it took Spencer a little while, and I'm not really too sure why. Right. But it took him a little while to kind of get going. Could be the same thing as Foyt. It it might be. Um, but, you know, again, I think Spencer's finding his footing. Um, what I'm encouraged about with IndyCar right now is there's a lot of talk about new teams yes. for next year. Yep. And I think when you have all of that conversation and you're still not through with the yeah. current season, I think you've got the right formula. And I start looking at... You know, th- there are some drivers like Brian Hurd, his son, Colton, yes. who yeah, I think yeah. are He's going to end up, up in a seat yep. um, in 2019 who are just extremely yes. talented. Yep. And we have cars that we can go to because yes. there are several teams like a Dreyer Reinbold who have cars for the 500. Right. Who yep. They go and they run the 500. That's all they run all yep. season. Yep. Exactly. And we're getting to the point where these teams are going, we could – we, you know, we get the right guy yeah. in this car, especially Dry Reinbold with having uh, um, their driver that his name's – he was a Penske guy. Come on. Come on, Cisco. Um, who's driving for them right now in the 24? Um, well, Sage Karam's been Sage Karam, yeah. yeah. Was, no, he, he was a Ganassi. Guy. He was a Ganassi yeah, he was guy. a Ganassi. Yeah. That's what I was thinking yeah. of. But Sage being at Dry Reinbold right he was now. He Pennsylvania, which yes. is where Penske used to be. Yes, but – So you could connect that dot. But, but – but, <laughs> But what I'm saying well. is, you know, he r- he runs well in the 500. Yeah. But yeah. that's a team that could go full time yeah. at this with, point. With and there are cars that can go full time. Yeah. And with the amount of cars we had, considering this was a brand new car. Yep. Yeah. All these teams had to build these cars from scratch. And we have this many cars running in the 500 well, where we have a bump day. Well, don't forget, too, McLaren. Yes. yes. Making noises about full time. There, there was a rumor that somebody Again, was testing rumor. a car. <laughs> somebody was Scott testing Dixon. a car that – may or may not have won a Formula One championship previously and may or may not have ro- run in the Indy 500 well, previously. Well, Fernando Alonso, yes. but, yeah, yeah. But, but then again, there, like I said, there's that rumor about Dixon, too, and Dixon has never denied it, which that is, is really true. cool because I think Chris would – I love what Dixon – what he's done here because basically here's what he's doing. He's not saying no. Therefore, when it comes time to actually, okay, are you going to go or are you not, He's going to make Chip Ganassi earn his you never want loyalty. To bridge. Yeah. So you just want to leave the door open. Yep. Hey, yep. if you're if you're wanting to you want to bring me on, doors open. What yep. you got? It's it's a it, it's really an interesting little uh yeah. conversation that uh that's been started and again, he's not denying it. He's not saying it's true. He's just not saying anything at all. Exactly. So, and and again, you would expect that from Scott Dixon because yes. he's Mr. Cool as the other side of the pillow, which is the why Iceman. you know when it comes to yeah when it comes to championship chases, you you find him at or near the top almost every year. But the IndyCar series certainly very healthy, I think, and yes. I like where they're taking the series. I think that like as, Laguna Seca. 
Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're great <laughs> place to take yeah, the series. Yeah, the sake of, I mean, that, that's another, I mean, that track is just so historic, and that's a great addition to the IndyCar Series schedule. I don't think they run enough races right now. No. And so Laguna Seca is one of those additions to the schedule that I think is really good. I think that's going to be extremely well attended, first yep. of all. Yeah. And it should be an amazing race. Full send into the corkscrew. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> that was in the trailer. It was amazing. I went back and watched the race, the broadcast of that. It's on YouTube. Oh. You yeah. don't send a car into the corkscrew like that. <laughs> yeah. And he just <laughs> yeah. so excited. Yeah. So excited. Honey, I forgot to break. <laughs> and that's the one quarter in racing yeah. that you don't want to do that. Yep. But, <laughs> yeah. That's just that that's uh that was that's always been a course that is just it's it's no different than you know some of the other courses around the world sebring comes to mind i yep. mean you know monaco they're just spa, spa. Yeah. they're just some road courses uh, that that are just some of these 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 circuits are just so beautiful and so amazing and so historic and to see indycar going back now i think just continues their upward trajectory absolutely wise to weather tech raceway or yeah, weather tech. weather tech raceway laguna I say yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to yeah. make sure we edit that yeah yep. yeah or weather tech yes if you're mm. yeah <laughs> french, french, pr proper french weather tech and if we have a quick aside sure news about news about us uh uh summit point came out on the 31st ah. where they they have a new owner now summit point does yes Oh, okay. So it's I a, uh, I, I forget the name of the company right now, and you can look it up. There's a presser out, but they're basically saying that we want to continue to run the Speedway as it was, cool. and apparently their president for operations stuff was the guy who was doing it beforehand. So okay. everything looking good. Summit Point, one of our sponsors, actually. Yeah, Summit Point uh, Raceway in West Virginia is one of the, uh, one of the neatest road courses in this part of the country and always puts on a good show no matter what runs there. So uh, good to see that that finally, I know it's been up for sale. It's good to see that it finally changed hands and, and uh, they can kind of now move forward yeah. where it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. We will step aside when we come back more of Motorsports Madness right around the turn on Race Chaser Radio. Here's an important message from Rad and this station. Hi, this is Bob Sheehan from Blues Traveler for Rad, recording artists against drunk driving. I like to party just as much as the next guy, maybe even more. But the one thing I won't do after I've had a few is get in the car and drive. Don't blow it. Always choose a designated driver. Remember, music lives and so should you. Motorsports sales professionals. Performance Motorsports is looking to build a team of experienced media sales professionals to represent our programming to the industry's top companies, magazines, and racing series. If you have motorsports sales or marketing experience, know how to work with agencies, understand social media, and are incredibly creative when it comes to working with clients and promotions, then we want to hear from you. Top performers are richly rewarded. Your imagination is the only limit here. Call 717-749-0444. That's 717-749-0444. Or email us at scorpionradiogroup at gmail.com. You want to ask for Sue. You are a waste. A loser. Everyone hates you. Why don't you just stay in your car and keep driving? I'm serious. Drive until you run out of gas and get out of your car and walk until you find someone who doesn't think you're dumber than bricks. Could take a while, but at least all that walking might burn a couple of calories. You may not witness bullying like this every day. Your kids do. They want to help, but they don't know how. Visit StopBullying.gov to learn safe, simple ways your child can help stop bullying. Be more than a bystander at StopBullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. You own a performance car and you know how to drive, but you want to learn real performance driving. Well, Bunky, get that car off the street and onto the track. Summit Point Motorsports Park, the Mid-Atlantic's premier road racing facility, located just over an hour from D.C. in nearby Summit Point, West Virginia, is the place to go. And you'll find that Friday at the track is going to give you what you need. For less than a monthly car payment, you can attend this regularly scheduled one-day instructional event in your street car on one of Summit Point's three world-class road racing circuits. You'll receive classroom instruction, skid pad instruction in their cars, including front and rear skid control, and four 20-minute in-your-car instructional sessions from a professional instructor. Have fun. 
go fast, and really learn how to drive. Call 304-725-8444 for class schedules and details. That's 304-725-8444. Friday at the track at Summit Point Motorsports Park. Hi, I'm Tyler Reddick, and you're listening to Race Talk on the Performance Motorsports Network. <laughs> Welcome back to Motorsports Madness. The natives are getting a little restless here in the studio <laughs> as we uh, get ready to throw the checkered flag here. Just about a minute and a half left. Chris Murdoch, you've got some news that uh, we actually missed earlier on in the show. So, and it involves Jesse Love's current favorite driver. Yeah, I heard about <laughs> it. We never got a chance to work it in, but Alex Bowman signs with Hendrick Motorsports for two more years today, earlier today. So he'll Good be move. driving the 88 for two more years, which makes me happy. With Nationwide backing. Yes. yes. Yep. That's awesome. Good move for Hendrick Motorsports. Good move for Nationwide. Glad to see Alex. Uh, I think he's earned that right. So uh, yeah. good to see that the 88's taken care of. Okay. But to go around the table real quick, who's going to win Sunday's race at Watkins Glen? This is the Cup Series. Hunter Smith. Who and why? Kyle Busch. Because? He's Kyle Busch. <laughs> <laughs> There's my answer. Yeah. <laughs> Cisco? Uh, Truex. Well, because Truex. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do better than this, Chris? Suarez, because he's been decent on the ovals up until this point. Ooh. He can kill on a road course. All right. I just just to be different, I'm picking Kurt Busch. We'll see how that works out uh, to get his win in the 41 car. And with that, we say good night, Gracie, on this uh, edition of Motorsports Madness. We will be back next Thursday live on Spreaker, the Performance Motorsports Network, and Race Chaser Media's Facebook. Thanks for tuning in. Have a blessed and safe week. Good night. Good night. You've been listening to Motorsports Madness with the Race Chaser Online crew. Stay tuned to Performance Motorsports Network for more race talk. For the latest motorsports news, visit racechaseronline.com. Motorsports Madness is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network, www.performancemotorsportsnetwork.com. A member of the Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated and may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit written permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page or our section of the PMN website. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, co-hosts, and guests, and do not necessarily reflect those of the management and ownership of either the Performance Motorsports Network or Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated, the advertisers, or the marketing partners. Be listening again next week when the madness returns on Monday night at 7 Eastern. Until then, keep it off the wall and keep the shiny side up.